rather, I would rather have Jesus than anything this world affords. I don't care what you name or how you name it. I'd rather have Jesus. Uh, another songwriter said, I've proved him o'er and o'er. I'd rather have Jesus. Another songwriter said, you may have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. See, it's a matter of priorities. And my priority is God. God first, God all along the line, and God in the end. And we're going to need God. We're going to need him more desperately than what we have. We might be right now. Right now, we might be in the beginning of the coming of the Lord. We don't know that. We don't know that. The only thing we know, if he doesn't come, he hasn't come. But we don't know when it's going to be. But one thing we know, without holiness, without holiness, no man shall see God. So holiness is my business. I minister holiness. I live holiness. I breathe holiness. Huh? I magnify holiness. Lord, I talk about it. I preach about it. I dream about it. I think about it. I pray about it. I live it. I eat it. Holiness. Without it, I can't see God. And I want to see God. I want to see God. In the book of Zechariah this morning, and we're going to read out of chapter number four. I'm sure it's a familiar passage of scripture to you, and I certainly have to freely admit again, as I do so many times, I could do it every time I stand here for that matter, that the subject is too big for me. Uh, I fully realize that. I have, to, I have to look to God for all that will be done, but I, I recognize that time will not permit, nor will I be able to phrase into words what I feel within my heart. Because when you talk about the Bible, it is God. And as unfathomable as God is, so are the depths of God's divine word. I call your attention to the fourth chapter of the book of Zechariah. And in the fourth chapter of the book of Zechariah, we're going to read from verse number one. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. And the two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked to me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked to me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring the headstone thereof, bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and they shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and forth throughout the whole earth. Now, I read longer than I usually do. And in the reading, I have run through three different texts. And I would like to actually hook all three of these texts up today. However, I really am not too respectful that I'll do that. 
I want you to know to me the first text that I'm going to use is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the second one is, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain. And the third one, for who hath despised the day of small things? Now, I want you to note with me, the reason we read from the beginning of the chapter was that a vision or something that the man of God had seen was forecast to us in the printed word of God. He said, I saw a candlestick all of gold. And not only did I see a candlestick all of gold, but there was a bowl upon the top of it, and he had his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees. By it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side. And he asked the man, do you know what you looked at? I am going to declare unto you what he was looking at as God's graphic portrayal of the church. We read about the seven golden candlesticks in the book of Revelation primarily, and of course also back in the book of the law. And we realize that the seven golden candlestick that set in the sanctuary of God, in the uh, sanctuary part, not in the Holy Holies, but in the sanctuary part, represented the seven church ages that God was going to expose to our view and our knowledge in the book of Revelation. And we also note, or should note, that in the seven churches revealed to, un, to us in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation, that we're living in the, th the last age that the church is going to have right now. And not only are we living in the last days, but we're living in the very last of the last of the last days. We're living at the time of the coming of the Lord. And I want you to note with me, that there is all kinds of encouragement in the Bible if you let the Bible speak to you. I want you to note with me not only that, but there's all kinds of instruction in the Bible. So that at no time need I guess and wonder where my help is coming from. I think you will recognize with me that we need help today. I think after the Sunday school class that we had this morning, every one of us ought to realize we really need help. If I'm locked into this body called self and self manifests itself to me and I have to come back, I need help. See, there was a day when you were out in the world and you didn't have the Holy Ghost, you weren't washed in the blood, and it was just you and yourself. And you have to admit you didn't handle self too well then. What's that you're saying? You ain't doing too good now. Hmm. But I know out there we did not do very well handling self. Many, many, many times when I would get involved with a, uh, some things like a, uh, maybe a drinking jaunt or a gambling spree or something like that, I'd come back and I'd say, I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going It's crazy. It's silly. It doesn't make sense. And it was just like ice fishing. I went ice fishing a lot. I don't know whether you have been ice fishing or not, but I'd get so cool. And I, I mean, we uh, usually fished out on Muskegon Lake. And it was so cold out there, you get the mini out of the bucket, he freezes just that fast. And I'd dump it down and I'd kick the thing in, hoping the fish wouldn't bite. I was so cold. And I'd go home and say, I ain't going again. The next Saturday, they'd call me up, let's go fishing. I'm ready. <laughs> and I'd say to myself, I'm stupid. You call this fun, but the next day I was ready to go again. And that's the way it was with the drinking. I couldn't control self. I had no governing power. Maybe in that day, I don't know, it seems like a dream because it's been many, many years ago. But in that day, I may have said to myself, I've got control. I may have said to myself, now, I can cope with this. I can handle my liquor. I can handle my gambling. I can handle this. But in my heart, I knew I was lying to myself. No man can handle liquor. No man can handle gambling. No man can handle the so-called vices of the human race, and neither can a woman. He is just deluding himself. But Jesus came by. And when Jesus came by, held out his hands and said, I want you. 
And I looked at myself and I looked so despicable and so dirty. And I couldn't believe that God wanted my soul. I couldn't believe that God was speaking to me. I had to make God, no, I don't want to use that word. I had to ask God to prove himself to me by three different things. And God proved them to me so fast and so quick. And then I said, no wonder of it that God, I can be saved. That God wants to save me. I said, Lord, I'm coming to I thank God for the depths of my soul that God washed my sins away. Oh, Lord, what a feeling to stand up out of that water and know that my sins are gone and to be filled with the Holy Ghost two weeks later. My God, with evidence of speaking in tongues, to feel the wonderful glory of God taking over my body, the Holy Ghost permeating my being and filling this human vessel out. And the glory that I felt within me is past describing. I cannot describe what God is to my soul. I cannot describe when God pours it out. When and God rings my heart uh, and rings my mind uh, and does what he does inside. I cannot describe it, but it's indescribably lovely. I want you to know with me, I have a job to do. Not only do I have a job to do, but you have a job to do. If you don't like it any other way, then the way the Apostle Paul put it, we have a duty. We have an obligation. We have something we can't shirk and put it up. Say, I don't want to go. Will you go for me? I don't want to go. Will you go for me? Oh, no. I don't want to go. Will you go for me? Now, if I wanted him, he'd do it. If I wanted him, he'd go do something for me. I persuade you know, see, God's Bible all set to go somewhere. And then he had to think, maybe I was just, you know, talking. <laughs> but he was all set to get going. But see, that's fine. You could go run an errand for me. You could do this for me. and you could. I, I'm sure you'd all help me out, wouldn't you, if I asked you? Wouldn't you do something for me? But nobody can live for me. Ain't no one of you can walk with God for me. Not a one can go through my test and trial. I've got to go through it by myself. Not a one of you can take my place before God. I've got to stand there for myself. Not a one of these men. I believe they love me. If they don't, I love them anyhow. But I believe that they will use themselves for me if I ask them. However, they can't stand in my place. They can't preach in my place. They can't live in my place. Primarily, they cannot be me. I've got to stand before God for myself. I want you to note with me as I present this to you to talk about in the brief time that we have that we've got a job to do. I have to present my body a living sacrifice. And that don't mean with any kicking and murmuring and complaining and hollering, well, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. Uh, like my son used to go out and get the coat. Uh, all the way out there, and he got the coal coming back. I could hear him muttering and muttering all the way back. Uh, and I'd stand there and look at him sometime, and I'll be honest with you, I want to hit him. I didn't like all that, all that, you know. Cause I had to do it when I was a kid. And I didn't go out there. My dad would have followed me right out there. Sister Ellis, he'd have followed me right out there. And he said, don't you like to get the coal? I'd have said, no, dad, I don't like to get the coal. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. So I, I was pretty nice with him. I just said, go ahead. But God don't want nobody muttering and mumbling. God don't want nobody saying, Lord, I don't understand why I don't see this and I don't see that. And Lord, I don't, uh, others ain't doing this and that. But God said, uh, I want you. Uh, when he called me, he didn't call nobody else. Uh, he didn't call my name in that factory. He called my name that day. Uh, and I went down in Jesus' name. Uh, I had my sins washed away. Uh, and God filled me with a beautiful Holy Ghost. Uh, and now he told me, uh, you go uh, and you sin no more. Uh, Furthermore, I want you to take your body and present it to me. I'm not going to take it. I could take it any time I get ready. I could make it do any time I get ready. You take your body and you present it to me. A living sacrifice. Holy, holy, holy. In every respect. That's what I want from you. Lord, 
what are you going to do with it? That's none of your business. Well, wait a minute, Lord. I'm a man. Yeah, you were the man too when the thing went through your stomach. You was a man when you got to the end of your rope too. You was a man when you was fighting the radio every day, every Sunday night. You was a man too. My God. And you, when you sit in the Episcopalian, excuse me, I didn't mean to say what church, sit there with his righteousness self-evident to everybody. You didn't think he was pretty good, did you? What you mean is you were pretty good in your dirty, that dirty little way. All right, that's fine. Sit there with his sanctimony. I can see him sitting there. Can't you see his ball sitting in the Episcopalian church sitting there? My God, look at me. I'm a good Episcopal man. My God, my God. I tell you, God got him out of there, though. God got him down. God got him in the water. He went to the King's Pool in Italy. Yes, he did. The army chaplain baptized him. He didn't want to. He said, well, I'll do it any way you want. If you want it that way, I'll do it. My God, down in the pool he went. Got the Holy Ghost under an olive tree somewhere over in Italy. And God took all the starch out of him. God took all the foolish out of him. And God said, walk with me. I said, walk with me. You're in the army now. If you made friends, you gotta walk away from them now and walk with me. If you made enemies, don't worry about them. I'm your God now. Don't worry about the enemy now. I'm your God. I'll take you by the hand and I'll lead you through. But I got a job for you. It's a job in the daytime. It's a job in the nighttime. And you don't have no time off on Saturday. And you don't get Sunday off for a rest day. You get no time off. It goes around the clock. You must present your body a living sacrifice to me to be used any way I'm on it. If you don't mind, stand up. Does your knee still hurt? That's my business. Thank you. I thought maybe he'd get a little shocked at that. That's my business. If I want you need to hurt, you're a living sacrifice. And that's my business. Hear me well, saints. If your body is a living sacrifice, your God can take care of your body. Your God knows what's the matter with you. Your God's able to heal your body. He's a healer. I don't care what men say. He's a healer. He's a healer of every disease. He's a healer of every affliction. Every ache and pain. The God that I serve. He's a wonderful God, a mighty God, an everlasting Father. I can't fool with that thing. He's a Prince of Peace. I want you to understand with me. He's a mighty God, an everlasting Father, and he'll do what he pleases to do. If he wants to make you sick, that's his business. If he wants you to suffer, that's his business. You're to present your body, but your body groans. Your body moans. Your body tells you, wait a minute. Don't do that to me. I hey, that hurts. Don't do that to me. If you do, I'm gonna make you suffer. You ain't gonna sleep tonight. I'm gonna fix you. I'll hurt, 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 hurt. And you gotta take it anyway. God said, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Just put your trust in me. I'm God. I'm the living God. I'm God of heaven. I'm God of earth. I can do as I please. Put your hand in my hands. I'll take you through. I'll make you mine. I'll use it for my glory. And when I get done, I'll make sure that heaven's your home someday. Now, maybe that doesn't sound good to you. But believe me, I'm certain of the victory that God has given his church over here. I'm not a defeatist. I don't intend to be a defeatist. And I never shall be, by the grace of God, be a defeatist. I'm getting tangled up my wires up here. But that's all right. I guess I got the worst in it. Uh, but I want you to know with me, uh, this God that we serve, don't worry about it. Uh, they'll pay more attention to you than they will to me. Uh, and that's bad. Uh, I'll just untangle it in my own way. Uh, I want you to know with me, uh, we ain't got a big job. How many of you, your flesh talks to you? Do you ever talk back to it? Did you ever tell yourself, shut up? My God, I'll tell you a key I learned from God. I was sick when I got saved. My stomach had been rotted out with drinking whiskey. I was drinking every day of my life. 
I had to go stop at several bars before I got to the one I was working at. I'm not proud of it. I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of to think that an intelligent man like myself would walk around in a stupor like that. It just doesn't make any kind of wisdom or sense to me whatsoever. But I did it, and I might just as well admit I did it because I did it. Plus a whole lot of other things. But I want you to know, my God, my God, I knew it wasn't good for me. I knew it, 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 it just it wouldn't be anything but a one-way street for me and when God saved me and said turn your back I was glad to turn my back on that I was thankful to God for the story that I didn't have to go back to the tavern I hated it I didn't want to go back to my friends I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord I was glad to bow my knees I was glad to worship my God I was glad to pray to my God and when God said present your body a living sacrifice. My body was sick. I didn't get healed right away. Every time the service was over, I'd walk up there and say, pray for me. Pray for me. I imagine he got tired of seeing me coming. But I got prayed for. And I still was sick. And finally I told God one time, with a pain running through my stomach and the jaw, I said, Lord, this is your stomach. It'll belong to me. It's yours. I gave it to you such and such a time uh, and such and such a place is yours. Uh, now, Lord, if you want it to hurt, that's your business. Uh, it ain't my business, it's yours uh, because it's yours. Uh, my God, uh, you told me to present it a living sacrifice that belongs to you. Uh, and if you want my stomach to hurt, uh, you just give me grace uh, and cry, make me say hallelujah. Uh, glory to God, praise his name uh, and give you glory uh, while it hurts. Uh, if you don't want it to hurt, uh, Lord, you can give deliverance when you get ready. Uh, You'd be surprised how many times I got instant deliverance. It just didn't hurt no more. It went away right now. It pays to remember who you are. It pays to remember I'm not my own. You sing it a lot. I'm not my own since I am dying. For all eternity, that's easy to sing. But God's going to make you put it on the line with him. Oh, yes, he is. When we make it, we're going to be attested and a tried people. I want to make it look as hard as I can for a few moments. Y'all worried about that? We get out of the way. I want you to note with me. My God, my God, this God, this great God has got a job for you. And the job is present your body. A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto me, which is your reasonable service. And don't you know that takes power? Can you understand with me that that takes a lot of power? My God, have you found out, Sister Martin, it takes something more than I will or I won't? Have you found out, Brother Story, in the time you've been saved, that talking is one thing and doing is something else? Have you found out that sometimes when you say, leave me alone, it just won't go away? Have you found out sometimes when you pray, you get up and it's still there? Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. I thought you knew what I was talking about. And I'm trying to bail it and put it as concise as I can. But this is the problem. I'm not going to heaven because I'm singing songs. I'm not going to heaven because I stay on my feet and clap my hands. I'm not going to heaven because I attend church every time the doors open. I'm going to church because I do what he said. I'm going to ch I mean, I'm going to heaven because I do what he said. I'm going to heaven because God said, present your body. Well, will you help me? He can't help me. Will you help me, he can't help me. I've got to do it myself. But God don't leave me defenseless. He said, you don't do it by might. You don't do it by power. You do it by my spirit. Your will ain't going to do this. Your intentions ain't going to do this. Your determination ain't going to do this. I gave you the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will give you power. Not by might. Or not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the living God. That's the only way I can ever present my body in the living soul. Now see, there are some things, some things I might be able to do and not have too much of a problem. See, if the devil come to me with whiskey now, that wouldn't mean nothing. I thank God I can say that wouldn't mean a thing. Wine, women, song, whatever, it wouldn't mean a thing to me. Maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to tell you that I'm infallible and I can't be tempted. I'm not trying to tell you anything like that. I'm just telling you, thank God, that's gone. 
I said, thank God that's gone. That went a long time ago and they ain't never got back. Do you hear me? I thank God for that. I don't want it. I, I thank God from the time that he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I, that fixed that. But there's other things. We sing, have thine own way, Lord. And something to me said, I want my own way. Then I sing, have thine own way, Lord. And something back here said, I want my own way. And you never sang a song like that. You never had nothing like that, said Brother Barker. Did you ever sing that song, Brother Barker, sir? Now, you have? Did you ever hear that little voice say, I want my own way? <laughs> Since Father, maybe the sisters don't have it like the brothers. Sir. Did you ever sing that song like that? Of course, you've got to use your imagination a little bit, understanding what I'm saying. But do you ever find out that something in you said, I want my own way? Uh, oh, yes, that's the way it is. Uh, you see it exemplified in the children. But I want you to know for me, my God, he does not leave us powerless. Uh, it is not by my, it is not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. I got the Holy Ghost. If it's by his spirit, I'll be able to jump to a wall uh, and leap over a wall uh, and run through a troop is the way the Bible said it. I ought to be able to do anything, uh, not in my strength, not in my power, but letting the Holy Ghost take me through. Yeah. I want you to know, somebody said, well, I, I know one thing. The Holy Ghost will never do anything for you that you don't want it to do. I'll agree with you. If you don't want deliverance, you don't get deliverance. If I'd want to live in sin, sister, watch. All the days of my life, I'd have stayed in sin. All the days of my life. But when God awakened my mind and began to let me know he's calling me and I realized there was a chance for me, that was my hope, that was my chance. He might not ever have come back again, Sister Ellis. That one time, and if I told him, no, Sister Dad, I might be a lost man today. I might have been long dead. Maybe an alcoholic out in an alley somewhere staggering down the street. I felt so sorry for a man yesterday. I saw the man not too far from your place. There's a lot of people down there. And I was down there. In fact, I was going to his place for a moment yesterday. And I saw this man. And as I drove up there, the man came up and walked on Division Avenue. He didn't have a coat on. Yes, he had a coat on. His shirt was hanging out here. He had a bottle in his hand wrapped up in the bag. And he was walking down the street. And I looked at him, and just a funny look in his face. I said, my God, there but for the grace of God. That's me. My God, tears come to my eyes. I said, Lord, help the man. Help him, Lord, do something for him. Wake him up, stir his soul. But I'm awake. Thank God I'm awake. My heart is stirred in God this morning. I have a mission. I have a duty. I have an obligation. Cry out and spur not. But while you're crying, present your body a living sacrifice. While you're sparing me, don't spare yourself. And be a living sacrifice. I want you to know with me. I feel sorry for that man. My God, my God, you see so many of them down there. Early in the morning, standing on the corner. And you can tell the way they're standing. Did you ever drink? Oh, huh? Stand up there. My God, my God. Stand there looking stupid to one another. Just stand there like this. Or you can't see me. Stand there just looking stupid. I am looking stupid, ain't I? My God, they just stand there. You can tell they're not with it. You can tell they're not happy. They're just standing there looking at one another. Maybe one of them will pick at somebody. And then you stand there and look at one another. My God, my God, you call that living? I don't call that living. Running from one woman to the other, that's not living. One bar to the other, that's not living. One game to the other, that's not living. But God gave me life. I said life. He gave me life in this world. And life eternal. I feel it stirring in my soul, the eternal life of God. I shall live. I'm not going to die. I've got it. I've got it. I've got the Holy Ghost. What I've got to do is hang on. Make sure I continue to have it. Somebody said that's the key. I knew there was a catch. No, there's no catch. I read you about the churches. Seven golden candlesticks. My God. I want three candlesticks up here. I ain't got time to deal with them all. My God. My God. I want you to know what he said. 
seven golden candlesticks with a bowl on the top. And he said, the pipes there up. This is a pipe going from the bowl. My God. And it just flows. And on the other side of the bowl, there's two olive trees. There ain't no middle prophets. There ain't no middle man. You better hang on there before I bat you with it. My God, you're supposed to be getting the oil anyhow. And there's two olive trees. My God, my God. I need two olive trees. I need... Come on, you olive trees. Just my way of doing things. You have to forgive me. Stand up here. Come on. I want you back with a candlestick. Get your hands on here. I want a power supply. My God, the power supply is Jesus. Do you hear me? Over here we have the prophet. Oh, yes, he was a prophet. Talk about a preacher. He was a prince of preachers. Oh, go ahead. Preach him. Preach him the truth. My God. On the other side, he was a preacher. To supply. No army can do it. Nobody can do it. You can't oppose it. No, you can't. You have it. It's already here. It's already here. Plenty of air. Plenty of power. Plenty of God. You can't stop him. You can't help him. Just get with him. Thank you. That's why the long illustration about the bowls and the pipes, my God, and whatnot. See, I'm hooked up. As long as you hook up to God. Now this literally represents the church. But anything that represents the church represents every member in the church. Do you understand me? Like I said, it's a glorious church. My Bible said he's going to present to himself a glorious church. That means, Sister Crump, if it's a glorious church, everybody in the church has to be glorious. If it's a glorious church, because if you ain't glorious and you're in the church, then the church is not a glorious church. Am I correct? If it's spotless, Sister Coppins, and you got spots, then the church ain't spotless. So everybody in the church got to be without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, any such thing. It's God's church, a fit bride for the king. And only God can do this. We've got the supply. How many of you, I guess I can take time for this. How many of you have ever felt what they call a dry spell? Would you mind raising your hands? How in the world could you have a dry spell when you got the well of the water of life in your soul? Could, would, would anyone care to volunteer an answer? And you went through a dry spell. Like one man told somebody about church one time. He said, I went to the service last night, and it sure was a dead one. The man looked, and he thought the man was going to say, yeah, I know about that. The man looked at him. He said, a dead service? With you there? With you there? How could you have a dry spell? All these hands that were raised. How in the world could you have a dry spell when you're hooked up, my God, like we just illustrated. Hooked up to God himself. The life that Jesus had, Brother Barker, is in you. Do you hear me? Do you think he had a dry spell? Do you think he had something that we call a dry spell? Do you think it came and went with him? No way. What, it not, what happens to us, we lose control. Did you ever lose control? Ever lose control of a car? Uh, 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 did you ever recover? Huh? You drive down the street trying to half sleep, and all of a sudden, you know, just just kind of driving down there, and all of a sudden, the car stops in front of us. Talk about panic. <laughs> you know, and sometimes we just kind of, we know where we're going. But we just go and, you know, got a mind on something else. Get way out past it. Woo! I got to hurry up and get around the corner. Almost lost. Did you ever lose control? You ever went off the side of the road? Oh, yes. Huh? I, I can just about imagine you went to sleep and ran off the side of the road. You ever done that? Not sleeping. Not sleeping. Well, <laughs> I ain't going to probe no further then. <laughs> well, trying to pass somebody. Almost, sleeping. almost right. sleeping. Yeah, when you ran off the road. Mm -hmm. I used to drive all night long. Many a time, we'd go on vacation, I'd leave here preaching, I'd drive all night long, till one night I got the other side of Chicago. Broad daylight, sun shining, I went through the night time and everything, and the weather got on this side of Chicago, driving along, and all of a sudden I went sound asleep. Now my wife's hearing this for the first time, if she's in here. I mean, I went sleep. I started to dream, and the car went off the side. 
and it began to bump on the side. And I woke up. She said, are you sleeping? I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm wide awake. That was the first time she ever knew that. So she talked to me about that. And I made up my mind. I said, that's the last time. I had no warning I was going to sleep whatsoever. I just went like that. I said, I ain't going to do that no more. And I never have. Not like that. That was my family in the car anyway. I want you to know, my God, there's plenty of power here. But what we've got to do is learn how to use it. How in the world can we have a dry spell when God himself has moved in? Has God gone dry? Has God like a well gone dry? What we mean is things have clouded our mind. The, the weight of life has got on top of us. And we maybe have been trying to do this in the willpower. I ain't going to get mad at my wife one more, not one more time. I ain't going to get mad at her. I will not. I don't care what she says. I ain't going to get mad. I, you hear me? I ain't going to get mad at you, wife. Not the first time. I'm going to be peaceful. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she comes, they do come up with some of the funniest things. Amen. And here you go. You come up with that funny thing, whatever it is. My God, maybe she thought she sent me to the store to get something. And, and uh, of course, maybe your wife don't operate like all the other wives operate. But your wife ever send you to the store, tell you to go get something. And they never told you nothing about what she wanted? No, she never mm -hmm. Well, you didn't tell me to get nothing. Well, I meant to. You never told me nothing like that. Well, that has been known to have been done. <laughs> so she might do that one of these days. My God, my God. And he comes back and here she just, just kind of lays him out. And remember, you, you said you weren't going to do nothing. What in the world are you talking to? That's you coming up now. You just had all you wanted that. You, who do you think? Well, no. Well, that's a dry spell. You know what happened? He didn't know it, but a long time before this, he started taking over from God. That don't happen in a fraction. That don't happen in a second. Do you understand me? Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is not done by my willpower. It's not, not done by your good intentions. It's not done. You got to have that. If you don't want to live right, you never will. But Sister Watts uh, Sister and Sister Hill, it's got to be the Holy Ghost in you. But God said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit. Uh, and too many of us are trying to whip our battles. Uh, you got a problem, you're trying to whip it. Uh, and whatever your problem is, you ain't going to whip it. Uh, you couldn't whip it before you were saved. You ain't going to whip it now. Well, it's different now. I'm not drinking now. Uh, well, what's your problem? Well, confidentially, I have a lust. Well, you couldn't whip your lust before you got saved. How do you think you're going to whip it now? My God, looking out the window for things God forbid. My God. You know what's happened? You're losing control and don't even know it. Don't even know it. We don't even know what's happened to us. All of a sudden, my God, if God don't wake us up, if God don't stir our heart, if God don't move on us, we're done for. We'd be like any, any other church sitting in there and clapping our hands on Sunday and living any way we want before the night. So I can't come tonight. I got a date. I can't do this tonight because I'm going to do this and that. And believe me, that preacher tell me that one more time, I'm going to let him have it. Don't tell me they don't talk to people like that. I've heard it. My God, I want you to know it's not by might, saints. They got to get this out of our head. It's not by might. It's not by your willpower. It's not by any strength you can bring forth that you're going to win the battle over here. If you got a problem, and look what he said to Zerubbabel. He said, Zerubbabel, listen to me, Zerubbabel. My God, my God, I want you to know what he's saying. He said, oh, mountain, who are you? That you'd stand before Zerubbabel. Who are you, mountain? If you got a lust, how can it stand in your soul when you got the Holy Ghost, when you got the man of God and the power of God and the glory of God? How can it? Oh, how can you stand before him? You have got to come down and be a flat plane like we were 
were speaking last week. Uh, that's what brought this to my mind. Uh, you got to come to uh, I don't care what it is. Uh, if you got the Holy Ghost uh, and you want to be saved, uh, if you're dedicated to God, uh, if you're committed to God, uh, if you're a child of God, uh, it's got to come down. Uh, it's got to come down. Uh, it can't stand uh, in the sight of God. Amen. So let's quit making excuses. Let's get down to business. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a wife like mine, forget it. You got her, and the Holy Ghost is bigger than any woman. My God. Well, let's go to the other side. My God, if you had a man like mine, I'm telling you, I've seen mean men in my day. That's all right. Just grin at me now. I've seen mean men in my day. But I mean, I got one of the mean ones. My God. Ain't no wonder I have to do something now and then. Forget it. Get it out of your mind. Just remember, I don't care how big the mountain is. There's a God that's in you. And the God showed you. You can't do it by might. You can't do it by power. It's got to be by my spirit. My spirit. My spirit. My spirit. My spirit in you. That's why I put it there. I only want to know one thing. Do you want to live right? Do you want to walk right? Do you want to talk right? My God, my God. So you're going to hit the man. Come on up here. My God, you ain't nothing but a nothing. In fact, you, you ain't a nothing at all. I, and, oh, I'll push you around. My God, you got anything stirring yet? I want something to stir. My God, I ain't going to hit him. I ain't going to hit him. I won't ball up my fist. Look at his fist. I ain't going to hit him. I don't care how many times he pushes me. I ain't going to hit him. He's looking in the wrong direction. He better not tell me what he ain't going to do. He better get a hold of God. He better cry, Jesus. Jesus, 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 every time he gets pushed, Jesus, Jesus, I ain't going to hit him, I won't hit him, he's going to hit me by the story, if I keep it up, he'll hit me, until he gets over in the Lord, and he cries, Jesus, don't let me fail, I want to be right, I want to be clean, I want to be pure, I want to be holy, and God said, whole mountain, come on down, come on down. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, mountain, you should stand before my man. Zerubbabel was God's man. Said, Who are you? And he showed Zerubbabel, my God, the constant supply from the prophet and the priest and the king and a lot of other things you could bring in there. Nobody can promote it. My God, God fixed it. My God, there's a pipeline to glory, Sister McLean. Do you hear me? And nobody can promote it. God promoted it. Nobody can stop it. God is holding it. And the way is wide open. They used to sing it this way. Got a telephone in my bosom. My God. And I can call him any time. An old songwriter said, Central's never busy. Always on the line. You may talk to heaven at almost any time. I erase that in my mind saying talk to heaven anytime uh, we got to remember God fixed this uh, there ain't no devil can cut it off uh, there ain't no power can get it off uh, there ain't no meanness and you can cut it out there ain't no evil can rise on you to cut it out God said uh, I am the one uh, it's not by might uh, do you want to live right uh, do you want to talk right do you want to act right uh, do you want to be a child of God uh, do you want to be holy holy uh, do you want to be holy uh, if you do uh, it's not it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. All God wants is somebody, somebody to say, Lord, help me. That's all I want. I know you know God's a God of power. Uh, we can go back to Daniel in the lion's den. Now, if I had been Daniel with the mind of a whole lot of people and God threw me in the lion's den, I'd be down there crying. No. Let me, let me say it the way I mean it. I'd be cowering over here in a corner somewhere. Oh, God. Oh, God, what did I do? Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. I thought, sure, you'd deliver me. Hey, what would we do, that's a statement? Would we moan and groan, cry and carry on like that? Would we whine? 
You ever hear the same whine, Sister Hickman? I've heard a lot of whine. My God, my God, uh, this man didn't do a thing. Uh, when the lion's den, he was a man committed to God. Uh, God had told him about some things. Uh, God told you about some things. Uh, committed to God. Uh, down in that lion's den. Uh, my God, my God. The Bible didn't tell what happened. Uh, he went down there, but I'm sure uh, he was praising God. I'm sure he wanted to hold on to God. Uh, and God said, it's not by might. You can't fight a lion. Uh, you can't win a victory over these lions. Uh, it's not by might. It's not by power. Wait. Uh, the Spirit. The Holy Ghost, the power of God. And by mighty king come in the morning. Said, Daniel, oh Daniel, oh Daniel, has the God that you serve continually? Has he been able to do anything for you? That's quite a question, isn't it? Uh, not only that, it's quite a testimony that Daniel lived before that king. Uh, the God whom you serve continue. The king said that. Uh, has he been able to deliver you? <laughs> now, if the king didn't have some kind of an idea <laughs> that maybe he would get delivered, uh, my God, he wouldn't have cried out. He said, get that dead carcass out of here. Let's pull the bones out. I knew his God wouldn't do nothing. Uh, my God, maybe he put him to the test. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I do know one thing. He cried out, oh, king, uh, live forever. <laughs> My God, my God, my God has sent his angel. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, his angel came out of heaven, out of all the palaces, and came on down and got down with the lines. Said, shut your mouths. Come on, button them up. Leave them alone. He's sleepy. He's tired. Go ahead, lay on him. He ain't going to hurt you. Take your ease. Take your rest on the line. He ain't going to hurt you. we got to understand. I'm not a Daniel. My name is St. Brisbane. But I got a God. I got a God. I have a God. His name is Jesus. Oh, Lord. He washed me in the blood. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He said, come out from among them. I'm out from among them. Do you hear me? I left this world behind. I'm mocking my God towards my God. So I'll be your God. Lord, I want to live right. Lord, I want to be right. I don't want to preach holiness and not have holiness. I don't want to talk to the brother about being happy and not have any happiness no sir if i talk with this brother and I, he's happier than i am i'm going to stick with him a while i'm going to say hey what you doing well i go to church yeah well maybe if we ain't been going to the same church what church you go to oh i go down there on Rena street yeah well what happens down oh man he teaches he teaches. I mean, he teaches the Word of God. I heard you say that last night. So you better say amen now. My God. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, he teaches the Word of God. He does. And, well, how do you feel when it's coming? Don't you feel kind of nervous sometimes? Don't you get kind of scared? Is he a strict teacher? Oh, yeah. Well, but you say it's holiness he's teaching? And you get all that happy over holiness? Man, I'm going to your church. That's me. I want happiness. I want to walk with God. I want what God's got for me. My God, if I can go through here singing, I'm going through here singing. If you want to go here moaning, groaning, and crying, uh, my God, help yourself. But let's go together and sing. Uh, my God, let's get over here and sing Jesus. Uh, is the sweetest name I know. Uh, my God, and he's just the same uh, as his lovely name. If you find that altar, can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a God. It's not by might. It's not by power. But I've got the power of the living God. I got the spirit. It is by the spirit. I believe we're going to make it, Brother Williams. I believe we're going to make it. But there's another text. It said, Who hath despised the day of small things? What's a small thing? Oh, a small thing. Uh, nowadays, if you drop a penny, very few folk will even stoop to pick it up because it ain't going to do much. Uh, but I, I still will because I came up during the Depression. So you throw them away, I'll pick them up. Because <laughs> I came up through the Depression. And I can't stand to see food wasted or money wasted. That's a hard thing for some folk to understand. But I, I used to tell him, clean up his plate. 
He used to think, well, if dad was an inexhaustible supply, no kid ever worries where it comes from. <laughs> you don't worry where you can buy the meal or not. He comes there at 5 o'clock, Ma, when's dinner? He don't ask her, are we going to have dinner tonight? <laughs> he just said, Ma, when's dinner? Uh, you understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to bail it quick. But there's small things. There's, there's, there's just small things. And we sing about the small things sometimes. Right. Did you ever sing the song, Brother Williams, Take It to the Lord in Prayer? That's right. Huh? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I can't remember all the song quickly in my mind. But it goes on to enumerate. Doesn't it just follow enumerate some things? My, have you trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Huh? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Well, wait a minute. Now I'm a man. I'm going to bust through this. <laughs> You'll be busting on it. Because God already assured you it's not by might or not by power, but it's by my spirit. All I want is the spirit. Now, I got one more point to cover on this. And uh, if you can stay awake that long. Now, I want you to note with me that as we come to the house of God, we come here to be taught. Some people come to church. You can sit down, Brother Williams. And some folk don't come to church like they ought to. Well, if I don't make this Bible class, I mean, this may be the last Bible class we'll ever be in. This may be the last sermon that you'll ever hear in this world. And if it was, I'm sure there'd be a whole lot of folk wish they were here this morning. Now, who hath despised the day of small things? In other words, who has set the small things aside? I wonder why he hooked that up with this marvelous power of this marvelous continual supply to the church. My God, my God, I wonder why he hooked all these things together. I freely admit I've just scratched the surface. I freely admit I haven't done what I'd like to have done with it. But at the same time, I want you to know I'm not going to despise a day of small things. Uh, you can do as you please about it, sir, but not me. Uh, my God, my God. If you don't want to come like you ought to, that's your business. Huh? But I'm going to see to it that you don't affect me in the slightest. Do you hear me? Huh? I'm going to take my place in the Bible class. Huh? And I'm going to sit and hear what the man of God's got to say. Huh? I'm not going to say, <laughs> and mother to my wife, <laughs> my God, and sit there and, and it's just slipping by. Huh? All the time I'm muttering and murmuring, things are going by. Huh? Well, that wasn't too important, Sister Williams. Huh? It was just a small thing anyway. God said, who did Despise Sister Mary, the day of small things. Uh, it's the small things. Uh, do you hear me? It's the small things. Uh, how did God convince you, Sister Mary, that you should be saved? Tell me. What one word did he use? What great invitation did he use? You'll find out when you trace it back. It was a series of small things. My God, you know why? If God had come to me a little while back, if my mother could have got me to come into this church, she sure tried, i I know you know she tried. We got an evangelist. We got somebody that's a good speaker. My God, do you hear? My God. I need just a little more. I got enough. And she used to say, will you come to church, Isla? You remember this, Isla? My God, will you come to church? I wouldn't come to church. We got an evangelist. My wife said, I'll go. I said, go ahead. But you go alone. Maybe she's forgotten that. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to drive by here. I didn't want anything to remind me of this. I didn't want any part of it, my God, to me. And if God had come in that day, it would have went over my head. But my God, my God, a little thing. I had been sick in my stomach. And I went to a doctor, as I've told you many times before. And he found out how I was living. He looked at me, Brother Partridge. He said, do you have to live that way, Lawrence? I said, I think so. If he'd have put his finger and said, <laughs> I'd have laughed in his face. But the man just picked the paper up off his desk, put his head down, said, well, you won't be doing it long. And when he said that, it got me way down inside. I said, doctor, what do you want me to do? And I mean, he took everything away from me right now. No more whiskey, no more beer, no more wine, no more nothing. My God. And I went out of there. I didn't know that God was getting me ready to hear his voice. It was a small thing, perhaps. It's a big thing in my life. But a simple little matter. Like, God, it was a small thing. God getting me ready. My God, my God. And then a man come to me. I was doing pretty good with it. I did have some things, thinking about dying. But, you know, I began to feel better, Sister Murray. I wasn't thinking about dying no more. I was thinking about pretty soon I'll be able to go back. And I met a friend of mine. And we went bowling one morning. And I was drinking Coca-Cola. He was drinking beer or something. He said, I can drink you another table. That's why you're drinking Coke. I can drink you another table. You know I can drink you another table. And he needed me all morning, Sister Ellis. And finally I told him, come on. 
And we hit one bar after another after another. I'm driving my car. We were supposed to go to dance that night, his wife and my wife. And uh, uh, when we got down the back alley, he lived down on Canton then. Uh, he was so drunk he couldn't walk. I helped him to the back door, propped him up against the door, rang, rang the bell, beat on the door, and quick got back in the car and watched this long enough, see the door open. And the last thing I said, she was going like that at me. I went home and laid down. I said, well, I shoot him. Drank some coffee and got up and called the house. I said, I'm ready to go to the dance. And she's, I could hear her curse now. She just started cursing and didn't quit, so I put the phone down. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't know there was a small thing. Big thing in my life, small thing. I'm pretty cocky. But oh, Lord, the next morning, either the next morning or the next morning, I was tied in knots. It was just a little bit after that. I sat in the factory. Well, I sat in the factory. I wasn't thinking about God or nothing. And all of a sudden, a voice come to me and said, What are you living for? Oh, I can hear it right now. What are you living for? I said, well, well, well. And I couldn't think of one good reason I was alive. My God, talk about a man come down step by step, piece by piece, bit by bit. Finally, I looked to the Lord. I said, Lord, is it you? Is it you? If it is, if it is, Lord, just let me know for sure it's you. I'll come. I'll come. Oh, Lord, I'm glad he did. He, the infinite God speaking to me, I heard his voice. I was in sin, Sister Nelly. I was dirty, defiled. I heard his voice. What are you living for? Yet I said, is it you? Let so-and-so happen that did. Let so-and-so happen that did. One more time, Lord. If I'd have been God, I'd have squished me. I'd have stepped on me like a bug. But my God, patiently, one step, a little thing, a little thing. And I looked out the window and it didn't happen. And all of a sudden, bing, bing. I said, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming. I'm glad I came, saints. Coming in this house. It may seem a small thing, but you can't despise the small things. When it's Bible class, it's your time to be here. You should sit here. Every time I'm up there, somebody should be sitting out here. I changed that a little bit. I was going to say everybody. Then I happened to think of the extra Bible classes, and I made it somebody. You can't despise. Somebody said it's testimony time. Some of you I haven't heard your voice testify in a long time. Now, now you listen to me. My God, who hath despised? Well, ain't nobody going to hear me. I don't have much to say anyhow. I want to know one thing. Sister Harper, were you washed in the blood? Did God fill you with the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Did you lose it or you still got it? <laughs> if you stand up and say, thank God, I still got it. <laughs> My God, that's going to help somebody. <laughs> Do you hear me? <laughs> somebody. <laughs> and the more trouble and trial they see you got, and the more they see you hanging under God, the more it's going to bless somebody. <laughs> you can't despise the day of small things. When it's time to testify, this church ought to stand on their feet as one man. Don't worry. My God, you stand, you start standing up like that, and we ain't going to have none of these half-hour testimonies. I mean, it's going to be popcorn, because we all going to get a chance. Do you understand what I'm saying? If, if you want some of these long stories, you write a book, and we'll all read it. Well, at least we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. But do you understand? See, but the only reason they get away with it because you ain't, you just ain't doing it. We come to church, it's singing time. Who has defied the day of small things? Never my, I don't like that song, it's too slow. When they, when they pep it up a little bit, I wish they say, Never my God to thee. Well, you sing it your way. I don't care how you sing it. However, you're going to mix somebody up, but I'll stick with mine. I don't think you can drown me out. You want to try it? Who's a singer around here? Anybody around here a singer? Are you a singer? I want to sing it. Just follow it. She's the eldest. You're a singer. But anyway, whatever you do, I don't care how you do it. My God, let's get nearer, my God, out of you. Let's get your soul reaching for God. Who have despised the day of small things? If you do, you'll never see the mountain come down. You'll never see the victory. You'll never have the power in your life that you needed. Somebody said, my God, it's tarrying time. I might as well cover the whole bit. My God. Oh, well, I'm too old for that. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. 
What's that you said? What do you want to do tomorrow? Oh, bless him, Lord. Who has despised the day? It seems like a small thing, the things that we're required to do. It seems like anybody could tarry. We all know about tarrying. Do you brother know anything about tarrying up there? You know, well, how'd you get the Holy Ghost? Was you tarrying? How do you So was I. I had a good education in tarrying. I know what you do. Uh, but uh, who had despised the day of small things? Somebody said, well, I don't see you tearing. You used to. I used to tarry. I'd preach up there and come on down this altar and tarry till midnight. But I realized my voice was breaking under it. And I realized there were some other people who could do that. Now, any time you preach, I'll tarry for you. <clears throat> you can get that, Sister Dyer. There's something wrong with it, Sister Dyer? That all right? All right, now. Is there any other small things? Sure. Somebody said, it's offering time. <laughs> uh, we're taking an offering for the burned out folk. <laughs> that ain't the small thing I'm talking about. I ain't talking about that at all. It may seem a small thing. But God has little testing points all the way along the line. He knows when you're singing. He knows when you're not singing. He knows when your testimony is real and when it's ringing, and he knows when it ain't. He knows whether you're going to sleep in church or whether you're wide awake. He knows whether you got this morning's message or whether you didn't get it. He knows all about you. And I want you to know something, child. He said, who hath despised the day of small things? What did he say? He said that if you despise the day of small things, you never get a big thing from God out of it. I want everything to pay off. I didn't come here to play games. I came here to work for my soul's salvation. I want God to bless my soul. I, I much well be happy I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere but the doctor. I'm locked into the church. I, I don't care what happens. If I was out, I'd be begging God to get back in. I'd be pleading with God to have mercy, Sister McLean. I'm locked into the church. I know the church is going up. And I know my only hope is to go with it. There will be no second round. There will be no third round. There will be no catching up. I got to go with the church. Saints of God, I, I pray God you heard me this morning. I know the mountain can come down. If it's sickness, it can come down. God is a healer. I said God is a healer. If it's a job and somebody oppressing you, that can come down. He said, oh, Zerubbabel, uh, look at that mountain. Then tell the mountain, uh, hey, mountain, who are you? Who are you? Whatever you are, who are you? That you can stand before Zerubbabel. Man filled with the Holy Ghost. Man washed in the blood. With the power of God all over him. How can you stand in him? My God in his sight, you've got to come down. You've got to come down. You will come down. You'll be a plane. He'll walk through it. Not even have to lift his feet like that to get the victory. Amen. Oh, don't you believe God? What have you got in your life you want to get the victory over? What is there? If there's anything, if there's something, I want you to be in a position where you can hear God say, Oh, mountain, oh, mountain, oh, mountain, who are you? Better. Hey, glory. My God, my God, my God! It's victory! It's victory all the way! Don't give no excuses. Don't put up no smoke screen. Don't play no games. It's time to bury your soul to your God. My God just led there and said, Lord, look at me. We sang it for years if you see anything that shouldn't be. But if ever there was a time to bury your soul, brethren, to God, it's now! It's now! These are the last days! The last go round! The last selection! Husha! It's the last selection! There'll be no other! There'll be no other! You either make it now, or you'll last forever! Don't give me the problem. I'm not bothered with the problem. My wife. 
By God, who are you, wife? That you can stand before Zerubbabel. Husband, who are you, husband? That you can stand before Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel stands for every one of us. Who are you, job? Who are you, neighbor? Who are you, devil, that you can stand before Zerubbabel? He's going to walk on you. My God, you'll be under his feet if he just holds on. If he just hangs on. If he just realizes it's not me. It's not my will. It's not my power. It's not my maneuvering. It's not my figuring. It's not me and my brain. It's the God inside of me. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Can you say it? Help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. I want to be saved. He's God. He's God. He's God. He's God and he's my God. I'm glad he's my God. What will I do without him? Where will I be without him? He's my God. I want him to be God. I come down. I come way down. I want him to be my God. The Lord. Oh Lord, I can't do it. Make a way. Make a way. Make a way. Bring it down. Let me walk on it like you said. Stop my mind. Not by power, but by my spirit. In other words, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it like the Bible said. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost of God. I'm full of it right now, and I feel every bit of it. I want you to know there's no reason for failure. No reason for excuses. Just look to God. I know they're waiting dinner for you. My God, I'm not finished with it. I want you to know, saints. I want to make it. And when I read that, you know what God tells me? You're going to make it. Just put that in effect. <laughs> Let's drop the excuses. Drop. If you got your eyes on somebody, drop him. <laughs> He's not the example. Well, if he couldn't make it, if she can't make it, I can't. I don't know who can make it. I know Jesus did make it. I know Jesus did make it. He went through. He came out of the grave. He showed me how to come out of the grave. He did the sin. Yes, he did. He did. He went up. He said, look at me. I got my eyes on him. You know what's going to happen to me one of these days, Bud Barker? Not when you meet, but, but well, hey, brother, you all going? Are you all going? Well, what's going to happen to us one time? Come on, brother. You want to go? If y'all don't want to go, then sit there. Come on, gather around here. Just leave a space out in the front. One of these days, you know what's going to happen? We're all going together. And we're going to start rising too. And the time's going to receive us out of the sight too. We're going right exactly where he did. We're going to look like he did. We're going to act like he did. And we're like he, he is. And we're going to be like him. And we're going to sit down in this stove. And we're going to be with him forever. Now, brother, if you don't want that job out any time, you get ready. But my God, my God, give me my chance. Oh, my hand. All I've got is what you put in me. What you put in me, Lord. That's all I got. I don't have nothing more than that. And the Holy Ghost. And you ministered the hope. You put the hope in me. Now, Lord, please. Take me home. Take me home. Take me home. My God, my God. Thank you, brother. I'll quit though I don't want to. If I don't quit now, I ain't going to quit for some time to come. I can tell you that right now. My God, for this God is strong. He's powerful. He's mighty. He's great. Oh, Lord, what a God we've got. You're going to tell him, my God, Lord, I would walk with you, but. I, Lord, I would have been there, but. I would have sung, but. I would have testified, but. I would have given, but. Lord, I'd do this, but. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Right down the mountain. You've got to come. 
got to learn how to leave it in the hands of the Lord. My God, let God have it. Let God deal with it. I want you to know, victory's yours. Victory's yours. It's in your hands. All God wants to know, do you want to make it? And you without God this morning, all God wants to know out of you, do you want to be saved? Now, don't give me your objections. I've heard every objection you could raise. I've had people, I was talking to somebody in the funeral. I talked to one person. I have another one to talk to from the funeral. They want to talk with me. And they, the one that I was talking with was talking about salvation. I'm persuaded the other one wants to talk about salvation too. I told them, and they told me some things. And I said, you've got to drop everything for Jesus. If you're not willing to drop everything for Jesus, don't worry about it. And that goes for you and I. Uh, that goes for you and I. Everything in my life comes second to my God. My family knows that. That was, that was something bitter for my wife to find out back through the years. We had been so close and then the church. You know the church? The church came in between. Now, maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. She does. And, and she had to learn to adjust herself to a pastor's life. That's quite an adjustment, Sister Marie. That's quite an adjustment. Because everybody come in between. And that hurt my wife tremendously in the beginning. But she learned and she copes very well with it now. You have to admit that when you talk to her. And she copes very well with it. But you see, you have to learn. You've got to drop everything for God. I didn't ask to be a preacher. I didn't want to be one. But I thank God I am. I, you don't know how I thank God. And I ask God daily. Make me a flame of fire before you. I don't want to be somebody just shooting out words. I want to be speaking for God. I want to do that. Will you come to Jesus? If you, all God wants to know, do you want to be saved? Well, but this, leave it with God. Leave it with God. Uh, may I take time to tell I was a sick man when I come to God. And I didn't want to believe that my sickness was driving me to God. I'd already told God I would come. And I also told God, I'm, I'm, I'm a sick man. And I'm going to go down and see a doctor. And whatever he says, I'm going to tell him, go ahead. If you want to tear out my stomach, go ahead. Then I'll come. You know what God told me? Just like I'm talking to you. No, not that way. I said, well, Lord, then what I'll do, I'll just go down and I'll, I'll see whether it was serious, you know, whether I'm going to die or not. I didn't want to believe, Sister McLean, that death was making me make the choice. And God spoke again, no, not that way. I said, Lord, I'll come like I am. Hey! I didn't get healed right away. My God, but one day, you know why I love the Bible? Well, I love it for a lot of reasons. I was in the factory, I was reading the Bible. And I was sick and I wasn't healed and, and I was saved, been walking with God, been prayed for a lot and everything else. And I was just feeling bad that day, fasting and everything else. And I read down to the Bible and all of a sudden I read back up there again and it come up just like that. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I said, thank God I'm healed. And believe it or not, I walked away from there healed. Amen. Never had it again. I eat anything I want. If you don't believe it, you ask my son. I had one of my daughters that called me. The she didn't know me way back then. But she, she'd go in the refrigerator looking for something. She'd say, uh-huh, the stomach struck again. And you can guess which one of the girls that was. It sounds like the clown. But whichever one it was, you know, uh, I thank God. I've got a lot to thank God for, and I'm full this morning. I want to preach this morning. I want to do you want God? Do you want God this morning? Are you tired of the world? Do you really want a new life? Songwriter said, if I could begin my life anew, I'd pray and I'd pray as the Lord said do. I wouldn't let Satan tempt me nor lead me astray if I could begin my life anew. Well, I've got news for you. You can right now there's water in the pool for baptism clothing to fit you you can be baptized this morning 
You can leave your sins here in the church this morning. And if God will be real gracious to you, in this respect, you can come out of the water speaking in other tongues. If not, he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. Don't ever forget, he'll give it to you. Now, I want you to know, God is, gives us a very full existence down here. And at any day, any hour, any fraction, we can be caught away to heaven in a moment's time. That's why you and I better learn how to love one another. I don't care how in love you are, I better love you. I better stop this smart cracking business that we hear so much about in the church. Because if God comes and that thing just come out of your lips or is in your heart unsaid, you ain't going nowhere. We're supposed to love and respect.